面水星結構水着参上チーティンはいNinjas, space invaders, monsters, a giant guardian deity clad in medieval style armor. Demon Hunter Mitsurugi has it all, and the best part, it's a seriously fun show to watch. Airing from January to March of 1973 on Fuji TV, this 12 episode series found itself right in the middle of the golden era of tokusatsu heroes. As such, it's one of those shows that typically gets overlooked or glossed over. And it's easy to see why. Superficially, there's nothing visually exciting about the show when compared to the colorful explosions that were taking place elsewhere on television during this period. But what this series has going for it is solid execution, forward thinking ideas, and a unique take on giant monster battles. The show opens with a mysterious shooting star appearing in the night sky and crashing on the nearby western mountains. This marked the arrival of the Scorpion Army, which has arrived from space to defeat Tokugawa and take over the earth. However, their arrival was witnessed by Old Man Dohan, the head of the Mitsurugi Ninja Clan. He senses that whatever arrived with this shooting star will bring misfortune and disaster to the world. So he activates the Mitsurugi siblings, highly trained ninjas with abilities, skills, and equipment far beyond warriors of this historical period. The three siblings are Ginga, the eldest brother, Suisei, and the youngest member of the team, Gekko. Each is a master of several advanced ninja techniques, the use of small scale explosives, and sword fighting. Plus, they are the wielders of the Mitsurugi clan's heirloom swords. Chi, Jin, and I. When these three swords are crossed, the siblings can combine to become the giant god Mitsurugi, a deity that is able to take on monster sized threats. And they will need this power to fend off the Scorpion army and their leader, Demon Scorpion, a mysterious entity with a wide range of evil magical techniques and the ability to summon and command. Dragon monsters to help the demon army achieve its objectives. Throughout the series, he would use his army to carry out a wide range of plots in his bid to defeat the Tokugawa, which includes reviving dead criminals, kidnapping members of the Tokugawa family, and even stealing elephants to make a giant double headed demon beast. But by the end of the story, it would all come down to a direct showdown with the Mitsurugi clan. At its core, Demon Hunter Mitsurugi is closer to a historical drama series with ninjas than a traditional tokutatsu hero series. This lends the show an atmosphere that's similar to that of Henshin Ninja Arashi, Kaiketsu Lion Maru, and Kamen no Ninja Akakage, which Demon Hunter Mitsurugi takes many cues from, including the use of many fantastical ninja techniques, giant monsters, And modern day grenades in a historical period. Like Kamen no Ninja Akakage, while this show takes place in the feudal period, there are some modern touches that ensure the main characters stand out and could be more easily promoted in merchandising. These include the use of color coded attire, hand grenades, and motorcycle style helmets that would not be out of place in any of the Henshin hero series that took place in modern times. These helmets are reminiscent of those worn by the ninjas in the Ninja Butai Gecko TV series that aired from 1964 to 1966. The episodic stories are standard fare for the time, but structured in a way that ensures the narrative moves at a good pace and that action scenes are plentiful. This is where the show succeeds for me. It's easy to get into and keeps your attention with several entertaining ninja action scenes. That always culminate in a battle between Mitsurugi and that episode's monster. It's not trying to be anything more than a ninja show with monsters, and frankly, that's what I'm here for. 
Every episode includes a couple of great action scenes where the Mitsurugi siblings get to show off their fighting skills and a wide range of ninpu techniques, which in classic fashion, they call out when executed. The choreography, selective use of explosions, sound effects, and music combine to create a fun presentation that holds up really well against more popular shows from that era and contemporary standards. But it's worth noting that starting with episode 4, the production team started to recycle some of the action scene footage. It's noticeable, but not distracting, as every episode still has enough new material to keep things exciting. Then, there's the title character of Dragon God Mitsurugi, and the various monsters he fights through the show's 12 episodes. These are brought to life through a combination of stop-motion animation, miniatures that are operated like puppets, and animation. This is a significant departure from a TV genre that by this point had been defined by its signature use of rubber costumes and stages filled with scale landscapes. And while it gives a unique aesthetic to the climatic battle at the end of each episode, it's clear that it also limited the vision of the production team. In the first quarter of the series, they do some impressive work to make these segments of each episode fun to watch but you can see as the series progresses, they start introducing more shortcuts to the filming process for these scenes as the designs of the monsters become simpler and rely more heavily on puppeteer-like techniques to move them instead of using stop motion. While the intention of these climatic scenes is to present a battle between giants, something about it just doesn't click and ends up feeling just like what it is, a couple of miniatures on a table. That being said, if you like ninja action, Dragon Monsters and the early 70s era of Tokusatsu heroes, Demon Hunter Mitsurugi is a must watch. From beginning to end, this show is just fun, and with a 12 episode run and low commitment threshold, it's just perfect for binge watching. <laughs>